Hey guys, Cam here from PhoneDog.com and according to many of you YouTube followers, I sound like Patrick Stewart. Or Bane. Otherwise known as Tom Hardy or even Sherlock Holmes, Benedict Cumberbatch. And what that suggests to me is that you're actually not listening properly. It's not even a case of my accent being British and you not being able to tell the difference between one British accent and the other. It's the fact that my voice doesn't sound anything like those guys. Engage. <coughs> and it's time for another episode of Fetch, the weekly show where we round up all the latest happenings across the Phone Dog Media Network. And this week's been all about Apple. We've been reading rumours and checking up on leaks and all sorts of videos and hands-on pictures and galleries for months now. And Apple, as always, has kept incredibly quiet up until now. It sent out an invite earlier this week simply stating that it couldn't tell us any more. The invitation to Apple's event was very simple. It had a very clear and easy to understand message. It simply said, wish we could say more. And then had the date underneath it and of course, like with any Apple invite, tons and tons of commenters would like to read into it and try and guess exactly what Apple's going to release. When actually all they're really doing is trying to fit what's on the invitation to the rumours they've already heard and the expectations that they've stupidly got into their heads already. Not so much criminal masterminding as just trying to crowbar the message of the invite into what they already believe. Take the wish we could say more strapline as an example. The fact that it's got the word say in it must mean that we're talking about a voice assistant. So Siri must be getting some sort of massive amazing boost. And it might do. Perhaps Siri's going to take on an entirely holographic form and become the virtual butler that we all want. And there's the 9-9-2014, which gives us an indication as to the date of the event. Some would suggest that if you turn the 9 and the 9 upside down, you get two 6s, and that means we're going to get two iPhone 6s. And the Apple logo looks like it's kind of raised, which means that the new Apple logo inside the iPhone is going to be raised. I, don't, I really don't know. The portion on the Apple logo also looks like two hills, which suggests that Apple might be getting into landscaping. Or perhaps wish we could say more actually means that all the executive and staff at Apple's HQ have all been kidnapped. And they can't say more because they've been gagged and tied to chairs. And actually what it is is some really, really minimalist design focused cry for help. To me what's more interesting about the event is its location. Now many of you who have been following Apple for years with interest will know that the Flint Center actually has some kind of special significance for Apple. It's been used to announce the original Macintosh back in 1984 and it was also used in 1998 when the brand new iMac was released. So perhaps the location suggests that this is going to be a massive event. There's more space for more people to attend and it could mean that we're going to see more. But what that is exactly we don't know. Rumours recently have suggested that Apple's going to release a wearable device at this event even if it doesn't actually launch it until next year. So far the smartwatch market is actually quite young. No one's really nailed it in terms of sales or broad public appeal but with the changes made in iOS 8 and the way that it figures out all your data, medical information, fitness tracking, home kit, all that kind of stuff, and Siri. When you tie that up into a stylish device that you can wear on your wrist and takes all the information it needs from you, then actually you get a really nice, tightly knit ecosystem that's very attractive. And it could be the device that saves the wearable market and shows everybody else what they should be doing. Apple iWatch. Make it so. The event will go live at 10 a.m. Pacific time or 1 p.m. Eastern time. If you're British like me, then the British time is 6 p.m. So just about the time you're sitting down for your dinner. Let's just hope there's a live stream so we can all follow it online. And not to be outdone by Apple, T-Mobile also announced its next uncarrier unveiling will take place the day after Apple's iPhone 6 announcement. Unlike other events, it's not going to be taking place in any sort of posh venue or arena or theater. It's going to be taking place in one of the bigger stores in San Francisco. We don't really know yet what T-Mobile's planning to unveil, but if we find out, we will let you know and post it on tmonews.com. So that's been it for this week's episode of Fetch. It's been pretty much just a one topic and slightly a bit of an extra topic affair. 
But we have covered much, much more this week. Go ahead over to phonedog.com, androidandme.com, today's iphone.com, and timonews.com for all the latest in a variety of different subjects across the mobile device industry. I've been Cam. I'm at phonedog underscore Cam on Twitter. You can grab me on there with any questions or comments or use those comment section down there. And I will see you again soon. Make it so, number one. Make it so, number one. <laughs> Apparently I sound like Bane.